Hello, okay. people, and uh, welcome to our episode of Who's That Anime? We're uh, continuing down the rabbit hole with Serial Experience Lane, uh, episodes five and six. Uh, and it's getting batshit crazy. Pretty much. It, it is indeed. Well, things are uh, things are taking a turn. <laughs> For the better. Yes. <laughs> yes. They definitely turned the intrigue up mm. uh, a significant notch. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Because I. I found myself uh, really trying to understand. I think it's really difficult to identify what is actually like. What what's the key thing? Like, what is the what is the entire story like built around? It seems like we see a lot of the like the effects of what that key part of the story is, but actually understanding what's causing it. Is maybe a little more difficult. <laughs> definitely, definitely. But hopefully, um, we'll get to that at some point soon, or then later. Yeah, but yeah, I think so. maybe not this not not this week. Um, no. So shall, shall we dive in to episode five? Yeah, yeah. Episode five is called Distortion. Yes, distortion. And we might have touched on some of the things in this episode that we touched on last week. This one yes. mainly revolves around Lane's sister. Mika? Mika, yeah. It's uh she's obviously going through something. I think it starts essentially Mika in a room, getting ready, and then some guy goes Oh, you want to stay type thing, but she's like, no, nah, I gotta go. Yeah. And not say very much. Um and then it cuts to like a crossing and is the famous crossing, I think, in Subu. Tokyo? Yeah. I think they're all set Tokyo. Yeah. I think you're right. Is yeah, yeah, it's it's the one that they always take the sort of panoramic camera shots of for for movies and stuff like that. Yeah. I think it's it's that that crossing. Um I, I can guarantee that there's been a shot of that in every disaster movie ever. <laughs> because let's see what's happening in Japan. And then everyone's running oh, across no. this crossing. Everyone's running across the crossing. It's fuck actually it's just a normal day. No, yeah. they're they're definitely much more organized than that. <laughs> they're definitely more chill. Yeah, just wait until you get out there and you find that it's just always dead and no one's there ever. Just desolate. That's scary. Uh, so yeah, it starts out there. Yeah, uh, and Lane's there too, it seems. She's just kind of walking along, listening to a voice in her head. As she yeah. does. It's becoming more of a theme. Yeah. Can't remember what I was saying. So I think it's basically came up and says, "Yeah, hey, I'm I'm God type thing." Yes. Yeah, basically. it's the it's that voice of the omniscience of the wired that has kind of I think tapped into her a few times. Like it's it's communicated with her on the board and through other means. You know, potentially giving her that device that boosted her uh, her navi. Yeah, I don't know, like the influence that the wired has in the real life. So, so it's something like that. So anyway, it's gone. She kind of stops in the crossing, and then a car kind of screams through the crossing. Uh, yeah, and has an accident of some sort that screeches. And then there's a new broadcast that says, "Oh yeah, this shouldn't have happened because uh, there's safety things." And automated cars are a thing in this world, apparently. And yep. uh, it should have been stopping at that crossing. Uh, but someone's hacked it and made the car go haywire. Uh, 
Lane's sister is there at this crossing. She is, yeah. Yeah, she's walking. She across. sees Lane. Yeah, she she looks at Lane stopped in the middle of the road because everyone's going, "Look at that girl! What's she doing in the middle of the road?" Yeah. Uh, and she's like, and then she looks at Lane and goes, "What's with her?" And then walks away, <laughs> and then bumps yeah. into one. Uh, one of the kids that Lane's talked to in previous episodes, who then starts hitting on her. That's right. Uh, oh, and for that, she's picked up a, a handkerchief been handed out by a guy uh, who's just handing out these things. And she gets some of the drinks spilled on, and the kid runs away and goes, Oh, shit, I gotta go. And it's like, Why, you weirdo? <laughs> like, and then oh, I'll better take this to the drag there. And then she tries to wipe it down with this handkerchief that she just got, which has a message yep. on it, which has something about a prophecy. Oh, fulfill the prophecy. Yeah. Well, um, no, it, it, it's a bit more in depth that one. Yeah, but... I just I, I just remember that uh, that summation is repeated ad oh. nauseum. <laughs> uh, yeah, and. Lane's kind of like deep in the wire in the middle of this crossing, it seems. And she's getting yep. told about prophecies and stuff like that. Yeah, like, she's experiencing like hallucinations uh, about like, you know, what, what the wired is and what its connection is to the real world. And yeah, it's, it's it, like, it's weird. It's kind of weird. So she was getting talked to, I think, by a doll all at first about um, God and what makes a prophecy a prophecy and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And then does it go to like the, they're all in, the, all in the house having food? I think that's the next bit I remember. It. This, this is a weird episode because it has like a few really bold beats. Mm, definitely. Uh, and the rest of it's very sort of uh, by the way, and just happens. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I seem to remember they are back in the house. They, they end up back in the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, Mika's dressed differently. She's got like a red top on in this one in the house. Yes. And the mom and dad are just eating away. We're in one business where Mika stares down Lane and goes, Did I see you earlier in the Subiru Lane? Oh. Yep. Oh, we've got about one crazy bit is during the when they're all at crossing, there's a big TV in the background. Uh -huh. And uh, Mika looks at the TV and sees Lane creepily staring out of the TV at her. So this is the first experience of Lane's creepy face. Yeah. I have now experienced it more than I'd care to experience. <laughs> Oh, it's not ending anytime soon, man. It is really unsettling. Oh, it's an unsettling face. Like she literally lo looks like she's looking up. Yeah, type thing. Looking yep. Yep. past her forehead at you. It's it's a contorted smile. Yeah. Oh, I, like, I think this it's, uh, this one's kind of, kind of the angle of like like that type thing. Oh yeah. But the, to be honest, that's that. I think that tends to be the camera angle that works at, is they sort of have it like camera above head, look and looking up to a degree. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely unsettling. That's a freaky, freaky face. Um, yep. Anyway, so Mika ended up going, hey, did I see you? And then Lane goes, what? And then, or just stares at her and says nothing and says, never mind. And then yeah. it kind of cuts to Mika again, but this time she finds that she's in the middle of the road. Yep. And going, what? What's going on? And she's the one getting stared at by all the people. Yeah, and also to be clear, at this point, I know as much as she does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know any much more. Um, and then uh, she's there and then is that the first point where 
It says fulfill the prophecy. Or does it appear on the screen? It might appear on the screen because you might look at the screen again. It might appear there again. But yeah. then she she gets thrown out uh, and is in a cafe and she's shaking yeah. up and drinking a bit of coffee. Um, yeah. Who, which she then spills because she was so shaken when she's trying to take the the lid off the, the cup but it's not in a mug. Mm-hmm. In one of those um, take away cups. Yeah, carry away cups. Um, and then that spills out, and then letters start appearing in the spilt drink saying, fulfill the, pol- uh, the prophecy again. And she's on what? And then everyone in the cafe disappears. And then she gets really freaked out a bit more and goes into the bathroom. And like, oh, get it together, Mika, get it together, type thing. This is where it's all, uh, then we get a bit sort of, is this not the sort of Red Rum style scene? Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Light, lights go out. She hears the door open yep. behind her and goes, Hello, anyone there? She's staring in the mirror and the lights go out and goes, Hello, anyone there? And no one replies. And then she goes into the cubicle and the lights mm-hmm. come back on and she turns around and then the entire door is covered in blood or red writing of fill the prosophy to fill the yep. prosophy uh, uh, and then during this time lanes have more hallucinations of where uh, she talks to doll first talks to someone else I think her, she talks to her parents now yeah but I think she has four uh, four talks. Distinct hallucinations. Yeah. yeah. So she sounds like a doll and a, maybe a bear of some sort. And then she talks to her mom and goes, Is that you, mom? Are you my mom? Yeah. And she just yammers away and not actually floating in the air, too, I might add. Yeah, you know, because it's not weird enough. Yeah, uh, not, not weird we enough. Should, we should also be floating right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally, with her. Uh, as you do when you float, you have got your knees bent back in the air and your feet not in a walking position. That's that's how everyone of floats. Of course. Uh, in Waters Rickham, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> what what was it? What's it called when your dead body moves because of the muscle spasms? Oh, I, I I don't know what that's called, but I think what you're thinking of is rigor mortis, which is where your body is atrophied in position. Yeah, I think I think that's probably why you think they're like that. Um, yeah, and they they're talking about the prophecy as well to Lynn, saying what the prophecy is and how it's fulfilled, and it's going to get fulfilled because it's it's going to happen. Uh, yeah, and then. She also cuts to her dad, and dad kind of stares and bleats all about something, and she goes, are you my dad? And then he just kind of blank stares her again. Um, and then Mika comes home, mm-hmm. all pagan and all disturbed, and she's taking her shoes off, like it's custom, as I am yep. believed, led to believe over there. Um, and then Mika... Walks around the corner, yeah, and they, and they both stare at each other awkwardly for a good minute. Going, it's a, it's a really cool scene, actually, because yeah. it's just it seems so uh, so incidental. Like the show, obviously, like it's making a big deal of it, but also like just kind of like weirdly normalizing it. <laughs> I suppose. I mean, it's just as weird as anything else in the show. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. Uh, we should point out as well. Like, I think it seems to be that she is, she's basically, I think, being terrorized by the knights, who's this this brute mm. uh, that exists in the wired. Yeah. Uh, sort of like the Illuminati. Very much like the Illuminati. Um... No, that was the last episode where she was laughing with them. Wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you're so nice. Ha ha. Ha ha. You shouldn't. You're so funny. Yes. Yeah. 
and then find out that they're maybe not as good, nice as she thinks. Anyway, I'll yes, that's that. right. <laughs> That's right. Might uh, even be the episode before that, actually. <laughs> She's just like, hey, you guys, this, I, I need some information from you guys. You guys are great. Yeah. Or is it? Or maybe it's next episode. Uh, I don't know. There's, I think some it might be information... There's some information that happens in the next one that uh, is also weird. Oh, yeah. Well, it's full on weird. I don't even know how that falls into place. In the whole yeah. uh, storyline, <laughs> but I think Very that is true. maybe next episode. Anyway, um, it's kind so of yeah. it for this one, right? Oh well, no, the, the awkward staring ends in a, a more weirdness. So awkward staring, and Lane walks comes into the scene and goes and looks at Mika. Everything all right, Mika? And she's like, "Yes, it's fine." And then yeah. they look around the corner. And no one's there. Or it shoots yeah. to see the show Mika Tom Delane with the door in the background and no one's yeah. there. And then she walks off up the stairs. And then Lane looks at the door and sees a shadow figure. I, it, yeah, like the trail of someone. Yeah, was there. And then she just fades away. So, what do you think is going on there? You might be right about the night's man. Might be someone's kind of like hacked Mika. God, I, that's what it seems like to me. Is like I, I don't. Although I don't know why she's being targeted. I think that's the bit I'm not. She's been sure about. This... But I also question whether uh, Lane has any family at all. So, <laughs> well, that's brought up in in some episodes in the future. I, I have been questioning that since the episode, the start, really. <laughs> since the, <laughs> why well, even you, 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 you watched this before, so you might remember. Yeah, I, so that well, no, so there's the thing is that I uh, please remember I watched this when I was 18 years old. I am not 18 now, uh, <laughs> and uh, is a li- half a lifetime ago, and I don't know if I really took the time to understand it and more just thought it was weird. Mm-hmm. Well, I can I can like, get that. It is weird. I remember like elements of it that stuck out to me, but like there's things in it that I'm noticing uh that I I did not I know I did not remember or potentially didn't know from before. Yeah. All right. That's kind of weird. It, it does. It does feel to me like uh, the whatever this like. Obviously, that the whole the the god of the wire is trying to explain to Lane how the the connection is more close than than everyone realizes. Like everyone <laughs> thinks they're two separate entities, but really they're not. Like they're sort of almost one and the same. Like a sheet that lies over the top of the other. Yeah. It's the Matrix before the Matrix came, I think. It, I, I actually, I, after having watched the uh, the new the trailer for the new Matrix, I didn't <laughs> think about this. <laughs> yeah, uh, certainly watched that. I'll should maybe cut talk to that in about a minute while we're finished rating the show. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure, but I, maybe it's the fact that Mika has kind of been. Maybe not playing her part in the role of the family, probably. Ooh, that's good. But that's I mean, really good. I like that. You don't really know that until later episodes. So, but 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 that sort of that goes back to what I've been saying since the start is that her family feel perfunctory. They don't feel like family. They feel like they're there to fulfill a job. They're Very there much to so, sort yeah. of. Yeah, and, and you're right, like it, it almost does feel like that. It feels like, you know, like she's kind of gone off piste. And yeah. uh they're like, nah, you, you can't be doing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um gonna gonna have to sort you out. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's, it's it's kinda of weird and I think it's definitely one of these shows where you kinda of need to watch to the end 
and then hopefully that they explain it all within the 13 episodes that this series is. Dear Lord, I hope. Because I'm... We got to episode 8, and we're going to talk about those. The, yeah, in the things are not getting weeks. clearer. Things are not getting clearer at all. Well, maybe well, a bit clearer. To, to some degree, they are maybe a little bit, but... But still, so, message was he had. How do you uh, rate this one? It's kind of cool. I like the kind of concept of and how it's not just about Lane this time. It, mm -hmm. it delves into a bit more of her sister, a lot more into her sister mm -hmm. for no reason, and that we can tell, or, or any reason why she's the way she is, uh, and the way she will be. So, um, yep. yeah, uh, I don't know. Six, I'm going to keep it at six. Uh, I don't think it's a bad episode. You've gone back? Yeah, I think I'm going back. I don't think it's a bad episode. But... I, I agree. I think it's the first episode that had really high points. But it's not much of an episode. No, no. We've literally just discussed it in 20 minutes, which is unusual. <laughs> yeah, that is unusual. Uh... Do you want to talk about the Matrix trailer now, since we're in between the two? Uh, yeah, yeah. So the Matrix trailer, I I kind of liked it. I liked the way it went. But it was pointed out to me, it was also obviously hitting on the nostalgic points, because it was kind of like bringing back things from the first movie into it. Like, oh yeah, you. What, his name's what, Bob, is it, in the movie, in this one? He's not Neil. Uh, uh no, well, no. I think that's the cool part is, is that it's whoever that is, whether it is Neo, Mister Anderson, or whoever mm. has is now leaving, leading a normal life again, or as normal as that would allow. Well, I no, I, I'm thinking this either set in the past or the future because it has mentioned that there is always a one, and it always happens every so often. And they had to weed things so out. That's the uh, that's the idea of like how many big bangs have there been? Yeah, that's it. So it's so is he going to be the original? But then it does kind of seem to fade towards like talking, of pointing to like things that's happened in the first movie. So is it is it a continue? It's difficult to say. I think you're right. Like it does hit on a lot of nostalgia stuff, but. Uh, that that being said, I think it looks really interesting. Like I'm, I'm definitely. Uh, I have the the 4K trilogy over there on the shelf that yeah. I'm going to be cracking into at some point soon. I might just watch rewatch them on Netflix. They are on Netflix. They're 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 so good. They, like so. Here's here's the thing that a lot of people are talking about now is mm -hmm. that uh, obviously the first is the first Matrix is a really good movie. Yeah, I really like Matrix. Yeah, uh, I thought the second Matrix was really entertaining, but not that good a movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it just didn't have it didn't do much. It just was very flashy and action oriented. Yeah, uh, the third one, the one that is about the story, <laughs> gets such a bad rap. Uh, I I always thought the third movie was better than people gave it credit for. Uh, I think so. I think mainly things get bad rap because it was like, you know what? He just sacrificed. Them. He went through all this and then didn't didn't continue on to like save the human race in a yeah, post-apocalyptic world that's... where it's all rotted and doom and gloom, and they live on the ground. And why not keep them in a, a virtual world? Yeah. Well, I think that's that is a big thing. Is that thematically the movies are very different? Like, because yes. the first one is is very much taking place in the Matrix and and sort of doesn't really exp expand too much on the world that they live in in the real world. But then the third one is very much a story about that real world that then dips into the Matrix to resolve problems and and 
further story and narrative. But I think you're going to find that when the fourth movie comes out and people watch it, there will be a lot of people who will be like, ah, the second and third movies weren't so bad. Uh, yeah, they managed to make a continuation of it all, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm excited for it. I think the trailer looked really good. The trailer did, uh, did appeal to me. And I haven't really been appealed by my, my... I did watch um trailer for what, Sing Sing 2, the animated movie about the animals doing their singing. It's so good. And uh, I never actually watched the first one, but it's the the first like two seconds of, of it where it's like the Lima doing the what are you done to me type thing and twisting it, contorting its body around like its head. <laughs> and then the boss man is going, no, and now that's head, that song is stuck in my head. I just learned it's a Billy Eilish song. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, well, you should watch the first one. The first one's good. It's, uh, got it's a very of, funny film. Got a lot of singing in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Too much singing for me. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, it's it's like, uh, also has a lot of story as well. Yeah. It's, uh, it's fun fun but uh yeah yeah i i think the what is it it's uh, like 22nd of december for the new matrix film or boxing day or yeah that... it's one of the two we or should that, uh um... one way or another we should arrange to see it in the imax i think the imax well, like then... normal people like when we used to go and see things in public with other people i don't remember ever seeing the only movie I watched in the IMAX was The Dark Knight. <laughs> I'm sure I've seen a couple of films in IMAX. I just can't remember what they are right now. There's IMAX. Is that not like Glasgow for us? Yeah, yeah. Science Center. Science Center in Glasgow. Jesus. Because mm-hmm. um, the other ones, I think the other ones nearer are like what people would classify as Limax, which is not really the. It's It's close, but not quite. All right, Limax. I think uh, it has to be the screen has to be a certain size, and the seats have to be a certain maximum distance away from the screen at furthest. And like, uh, obviously, the, the 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 main thing about IMAX is the the uh, aspect ratio. But cool. like, in order for it to be an IMAX presentation, there needs to be like more to it than that, apparently. Yeah. Possibly. Does a guy I used to work with used to talk about it. What, at cinema? Or? No, like uh, uh, in, 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 in other jobs. Like, <laughs> in other jobs. He, yeah, he was, uh, he was uh, into, into the whole IMAX and LIMAX <laughs> thing. Conspiracy theory. Uh, yeah, maybe, man. Maybe. Um, I, might, I might have lied. I might also went and watch Ruby. In IMAX, because they were doing like the oh. first two seasons in there. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, that's kind of weird, but yeah, I think that was there. I certainly went and watched them in the cinema just before the third one came out. <sighs> Still haven't watched it. I haven't watched any Ruby. Uh, if you like, if you like things, they're very. It's very much done. It's done in Poser for the first couple of seasons. So mm-hmm. the animations aren't up there, but if you write red versus blue type animations where they did some like yeah, cool scenes in it's that. It's Rooster Teeth, right? Yeah, it's Rooster Teeth does that. And it was um, Monty Ong's creation who came yeah. on the red, red and blue team apparently and did some things and then. But he died. Um, season end of season two, Monty Young. He had a bad, bad reaction in the hospital or something. They went and went in, and then they, they gave him something, and he was allergic to it or something like that. Didn't, didn't Rooster Teeth also do the new Transformers stuff on Netflix? Yeah, yeah, they were the ones that were doing that. Um, that's all right. That's... I, I liked the first season a lot. 
it was nice and dirty and glim and then it went really weird in my my thought of like oh they f they flew out oh, they, they they stole the all spark from Cybertron, flew out to like the world to kind of retrieve it get to like a, a weird portal thing where scarf knots is is there to so, cause problems that's the second season though yeah yeah, well, that's where it got weird, man. That's where. Yeah, Earth Earthrise is definitely a lot weirder than than Siege. Yeah. And I watched one episode of Kingdom, and I haven't watched any more yet. And I the other two I binge watched like one episode after the other. Yeah, you don't like the so, Kingdom. I am not a fan of Beast Wars Transformers in the slightest. I kind of hate them. <laughs> <laughs> like Loki totally hate beast wars oh okay um i think it's super fucking dumb and this is also coming from the perspective of a guy who likes the show about the cars that transform into robots <laughs> yeah. well um, i i know i kind of like the concept of beast wars and the idea of it is like it's transforming from the future uh and they're once again off to try and save cybertron because it's dying and uh, they end up going traveling through space, hit like some time distortion thing and get sent to yeah. Earth before the other Transformers reached it. But the thing is, is or, didn't the Transformers reach Earth like way before, like millions of years before humans were there anyway? They did. So I think maybe they do cover it. Yeah. Um, I and I don't think they realized that they were on Earth until oh, more okay. in the end. And then I never really watched Beast Wars, but I think I caught a glimpse of it in the end in the the run of Transformers comics for mm -hmm. in the UK. And I think they ended that with the Beast Wars kind of coming into it. Um, yeah, I, like, hey, and, to each their own, and I don't want to yuck anyone else's yum. Like, if people enjoy it, that's totally cool. Like, yeah. it, it just does not appeal to me in any way, and I, I, I would like for more stuff to engage me in a way that is cool, but for some reason it just does not click. Like, it just does not click at all. All the uh, Beast Machines. What is that? That's like the sequel to Beast Wars. <laughs> oh, no. Because, uh... No. Cause, uh and that one is like in the Beast Wars, I think they make it way back to Cybertron. Okay. And they make it back to Cybertron into the future where no one's about. And okay. So they have like all these tributes and they're like they've got like a statue of Optimus Prime and statue of, like Megatron. And now, now they're getting morphed back into the robots. Uh, actual mechanical beings, or they had to s be. It's, it's something to do with like the atmosphere and stuff. I, I, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I got like you can borrow the box out because somebody gave me it, and I watched it all, and was like, oh, okay. I never watched before. Sure. So I have no idea. I did watch. Uh, I've already watched like all the Japanese trash that happened after season two. So, <laughs> yeah, like. Yeah. Uh, is it Victory Headmasters and Super God Master Force? Yeah, I remember watching the Headmaster thing, but I don't remember. I think that was the American side stuff. None of those are good. <laughs> well, the, well, no, the American the, the, the that's season three where they did the Headmasters and in, in uh, Transformers in the West, but they also had a whole season of it called Headmasters in Japan as well. Yeah, yeah, and it gets super weird because. Optimus Prime, so because comes some god Optimus Prime, Super God Master Force. Yeah, oh man, it's so Japanese are, Transformers is when. Hey, hey, there's some more material for us potentially one day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know there are plenty of Transformers podcasts, but I, I imagine very few of them will cover those series, the Takara no. animation series. Nah, they gotta do that either the whole time. But um, I don't know, man. I can I can watch um, the original Transformers series. Uh, it's all free on YouTube now. Well, the first three seasons, anyway. 
God, I still can't watch it. <laughs> I downloaded it ages ago and watched it. Wow. I've been rewatching it with my son, and that's been okay because like, he enjoys it. But I've also, and like slowly veering back towards anime, uh-huh. uh, <laughs> uh, we've also been watching Dragon Ball Z because it's the TV PG edits that they have on Funimation. <laughs> okay, that's weird. So, so it's been got around a lot of that not great violence and maybe like weirdly sexualized scenes uh, that yeah. inhabit Dragon Ball Z on occasion. I was, I've been watching Shaman King on Netflix. Oh, okay. I mean, I kind of liked it when I way back when it was on Fox Kids. Mm-hmm. But. It's it claims on the front of it. It claims it's a Netflix original. I think you said this the last time, actually. Yeah, it because is. it's that's yeah. Although we, this is when we talked about the fact that Netflix is actually from like nineteen ninety seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but still, it's it, it can't be. Is it claims it's a Netflix original when it had no no dealings with like production of anything. <laughs> Anyway, uh, but so, uh, episode six. Oh uh, no! I went and switched off, and so my my point in the Shaman King is there's like a, a scene that's really brutal. I mean, you don't see one of the characters getting cut open, but it's like literally. So it's all about shamans and magic and stuff, and there's okay, and it's all about the, you know, oh, you got to be in a battle and contest to be the next Shaman King type thing. You know, it's one of those those armies. And I've seen in it where this necromancer just goes, Ah, oh, your your uh, your physique to like um the psychic of um Yo, his main character, uh-huh. is is really small and weird. I want to study you because he's a doctor. So you like basically summons all these skeletons, stop Yo to interfere and then uh, gets Gets this other guy and literally opens him up and starts looking inside his body and going, "Oh look, internal uh, organs and stuff like this." Blah blah blah, and it's like, "Holy shit, that can not air on false kids." Nice. That, that, that that must have been cut out. And that... to be fair, there was a lot of stuff like that on false kids because there was like <laughs> Tenchi Muyo, and that is weirdly, uh, like weirdly raunchy. Yeah, when it's not being shown in the West. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was a very different show to me the first time I watched it. No, no doubt. I was, um, and it's like One Piece. One Piece was, um, has a, a notorious, uh, time when, uh, four, four kids took over to take it over to America. And I went, oh, this is a kids' show. So they changed a lot of things in it. Like, for example, there's a character that smokes and he always has a cigarette. Uh-huh. So they, they changed that to a lollipop. So they always had a lollipop in his mouth. And, you know, it's it's not exactly... Um, and there's other, like, things that they, they muted for the Western audience so they can pass to the kids show. And obviously it's not, not as good and doesn't make as much sense. <laughs> Although to be fair, like I guess if that's all you know, it's all you know. Like, because I mean, I I I remember enjoying like Tekaman Blade and Tenshi Muyo and Dragon Ball Z and stuff like that, uh, yeah. and, and even like Dragon Ball GT to an extent. Because uh, God, that show is bad. Um, oh, it's terrible. But like, but they were all heavily edited for for Cartoon Network. Same as uh, like even Big O, I think was probably. Yeah, I mean that's why. Network and, and and Fox Kids, all that stuff would have been. It's pretty boring, yeah. I find. But but but, but yeah, like I think that's the thing is is like a, in in retrospect, I I didn't know any better because like I had no other access to anime. Like the the other anime I used to end up watching was stuff like, you know, Devil Man at fucking three o'clock in the morning on Channel Five, <laughs> or uh, you know, like stuff you definitely shouldn't be watching or renting a video because your parents are like, yeah, that's a cartoon, that should be fine. And yeah. you end up watching Fist of the North Star at you know nine ten years old. Yeah, um, it's not exactly not uh, gory. 
Oh. It's, I mean, it's fairly brutal. I mean, they they had to like. I think they had to edit it to be like black and white type stuff for the gore. I think that was something. Because that's what like samurai movies did. Japanese samurai movies. I sure did for a while. I'm gonna have to put a pause just for a second because my son is coughing his head off. Oh, okay. Two seconds. Nope. Uh, pause up. Okay, All right. He's wait. Nope. You just wait for me to set fucking back down. Always. Uh okay. So here's an idea. Uh let's stop that. Huh? Just stop. Stop it. So stop recording. Huh? Uh go to file hang of things here. Mm-hmm. Uh, into the into the actual reason we're we're doing this show. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we've 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 tangented from the Matrix to Transformers Tra- to Beast Wars to anime, Champ to oh, yeah. yeah, to Ruby to IMAX. Yeah, we've we've been around the houses. We've been around the houses. So yeah, bring it back for. The second episode that we're going to talk about today, which is episode six, and it's called Kids. Yeah, kids. Not the not about not talking about the movie Kids. No. But are we? Song Kids. I never watched Kids the movie. Is it about Kids the movie? I don't know. Who's in Kids the movie? I I don't know. I just know there's a movie called Kids, and I never watched it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not about those kids. Nope. Pretty sure it's not. Alright. Anyway. um, Let's get into this. So, Mm -hmm. this, I believe this one, I think, starts off with Lane in a chat. What is they show in a chat room in Lane's world on the wire where she's sitting about? Yeah. And she's talking to the the knights and going, ah, ha, 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 you're so funny, you're so nice, ha ha ha, and she has like a fake laugh and everything about it, and going, oh my god, oh, in her face and shock and stuff like that. Yeah. And then she has to leave, and then she's walking to school. Doesn't her dad check in on her computer, like her room? Oh yeah. Point? And he sees like how much it's changed. Yeah. So I feel like now, now we're at the stage where when she's moving about in the room, like there's splashing on the ground from the water leaking from her water cooling. Yeah, her weird water water cooling. It's not anywhere near the machine. Um, it's in the tough top corner of her room, but she's got like multiple screens and cables lying everywhere in the room. Yeah. And. Yeah, there's water leaking from this uh, home-built water coolant that she's built. This is like before yeah. that thing was even was needed for computers, really. A fan would just work just as well back in the 1980s, to be honest. Well, yeah. Maybe back for the super cool computers, uh, super computers and Big server rooms and stuff like that, maybe, but I don't think so. Don't think so. Um, anyway, yeah, so he checks in and she's just kind of staring blankly at the screen. He's just staring blankly mm-hmm. at her. And then she's got to go to school, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, cause she goes to hang out with uh, the usual crowd at school. And then they... The, the, they don't hang about in school long though, because they did they not then move to the same plate, the only other plate external the only other external scene. Uh, uh no no, um So she's walking to school and she notices a kid down the street with the arms in the air. Like he's praying to something or hailing something in the sky. 
Yeah, is that's that's in the district though. No, it's also like the street, and then Isn't she it? kind of looks, and then she looks at the sky and looks at the kid, and he dis he's disappeared, and then she goes to oh, school. Okay, no, you're right. Because there's yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of like prelude at the start of the day for the episodes of like uh, Lane walking in the building and seeing weird shit like the car with the laser eyes, and uh, yeah, and the guy staring at the the, the lab post. That's right, yeah. But he wasn't staring at lap. He was staring at late. Uh but that's that's to be um discussed later in another episode. <laughs> a lot of uh, uh what do you call it? Prelude? For foreshadowing? Yeah. Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Yeah, that's it. Um anyway, so she goes to school and she talks to her friends and they're like, oh, did you do this, Lane? Are you getting proper into your hacking stuff, I think. Yeah. Actually, so what are we on about? As always, she always, like, got like, all instant and stuff, and she's got, like, a new cell phone. It has, like, access to the wire remotely, and it's weird, kind of, like, handheld. Yeah. And, like... Reminded I mean, me of a, an Apple Newton. An Apple Mixed Newton. with the Pokedex. It looks more like a Pokedex, I think. It holds in your hand and it kind of like expands out the way and you have like a, an aerial sticking out and things. Um, yeah. Foreshadowing the mobile phone technology. Uh, not really. Yep. Well, sort well, of. I mean, like, it, I think this show foreshadows quite a lot. Like, it doesn't hit the nail on the head in terms of like oh, that's exactly how it was done, but things like autonomous vehicles and internet access from anywhere and, you know, that ever-decreasing divide between life online and life in real life. Yeah, yeah, it is. it's certainly hitting all that. Um, but, uh, well, she's doing that. Uh, and then, you don't ever hang out with us, Lane, type things her friends are saying. Like, she'd hang, come hang out with us. Uh, you seemed all lonely and stuff like that. And she was like, oh, well, you know, I'm not. I can't go. People come to see me and on the wire. But I went, wait, no. I can't go to them on the wire. That would be more yeah. accurate. And then one of the friends goes, friends online aren't friends. They're friends. That's, once again, I suppose, is a bit more of a portion for uh, society. As a whole, because yep, I don't think. Well, I suppose there were probably IRC chat rooms and stuff back then. Yeah, well, I would. I mean, like what ninety nine? You'd you'd have a uh, Yahoo chat, Yahoo chat rooms oh, yeah. were a thing, because um, that's, wh that's where yeah. I was. <laughs> and AOL. <laughs> uh, yeah, I never really got into AOL. I I hung about on the Yahoo chat rooms because it was pool. You could play pool while you chatted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. yeah. That seems to be my mate was like that. Uh he did that. Um yeah, so anyway, uh, and then they just so all right, I'll come out with you type thing. And then they head to Alice's room, uh, flat, apartment. Mm hmm And she gets dressed off and she's got like makeup on and stuff and looking more normal, like, normal. human. Yeah, sort of thing. And then she's walking along the street and then they point out the kid kind of praying to the sky again. Yep. And she's like, oh, okay. And then Lane kind of fixates and notices another two kids doing it. And then all of a sudden the sky opens and it's hard naked in the sky. Yep. In the clouds. And it's reported as um. It's probably there's a weird phenomenon. Uh, could be a hoax or something like that. But everyone yep. kind of saw it where it was Lane, and Lane was like, "What the hell? What's happened here?" And then she was like, "Um, kind of goes home, goes back on the wire, and yeah, does she like starts a... researching it." Yeah, but I don't understand how the research come to the research it came to. 
No, so like there's these sort of offbeat conversations that happen. Uh, I think this is, is this the bit with the the kind of Cheshire Cat type. Yeah, she's like in the guy. Cheshire Cat. But this is another thing we should. Yeah, I think he's going. Gonna... <laughs> yeah, just has a completely different attitude on the wire to the, what she is in normal life, and she's slowly changing and progressing. First, um. Or a uh, manner in real world as well. She's become more it's, confident. Yeah, it's, it's slowly starting to impact the way she interacts with people in the real in the real world. Um, yeah, for better or worse. Yeah, uh, and she's having the speaking with the Chester cat and saying, "Ah, oh, your line's crap. It's all hissy. It's horrible. Spit it out." Yep. You freak type thing and being really mean yeah, to the she's, guy. She is very mean to him. Uh and you know, like he doesn't actually really give her any information. She just kind of talks to him and he's like, Yep, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of ends up with a uh a name. Um it's a professor who um <clears throat> was the creator of kids, and kids is not a reference to like children uh, is in a way, but it's also in re it's an acronym, I assume, for some sort of experiment. Uh, yeah. Um, and the experiment's kind of like on the lines of Akira, with the movie. I, I I was literally about to say there's some massive Akira vibes in this. Oh. Um, well, it's all about. So my my recollection of this mm -hmm. is yeah that they basically. Uh, gathered psychic energy, psi energy from all these children in an attempt to store it. Yeah, but not the other type of psi energy. What was the other one? Gangnam style. Gang yeah. <laughs> I refers to it as psi, but it says it's not um, like proper psychic energy. It's like no. to have a way to kind of like Take things, but not like in a psychic yeah, way. Yeah, it, it seems almost like it's the psychic version of potential energy. <laughs> yeah. Like it's not doing anything as such, but it could. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think it's they, they just have. It's like building up on luck or something like that. Yeah. Um,. But of course, the the experiment didn't go so good, and uh, all all those children died. Yeah, because he was collecting energy to store, and he was meant to, um, I don't know, be a potential limitless energy or something like that. But then, yeah. obviously, a big explosion happens because that's what ever happens with limited energy, big explosions. Yep. And then he, he buried the he might have buried the um buried the research, but someone dug it up, started doing it again. But Yeah, it, it's heavily hinted that that's the knights. Yeah. It was like that's the that rebel group's done it. And they refer to the knights as a rebel group, but never mentioned yeah. and he try and Lane tries to get the information out of him, but he's like, Oh, it's my time to go type thing he's Living in the wild, as it's such a peaceful distance in the wild, burning yeah. his This is a very matrixy type scene, because he is obviously too sick or something in 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 the real world, mm -hmm. but is living is living his life like you say in in the wild in this kind of blissful, perpetual uh, sundown type scene um, um where he's just yeah. lying and, and kind of chilling out on a balcony yeah yeah well i think he's lying chilling out because he's got a wheelchair still in this world yeah he's not yeah but it's, it's just like it's supposed to be sort of relaxing i think is the the imagery or the connotation but like yeah. it's an interesting scene because there's a lot of like you know a lot of regret shown for what happened and like 
I don't think that that the, the idea of it didn't come across when it was originally talking about the experiment and how it was a a thing like that the guy would be remorseful for what happened. It's more just a thing that did. But yeah, like he's basically been on the run, I suppose, and just is dying. Yeah. And is now living out his final hours in in the wired. Yeah, exactly. And he was kind of complimenting the people who stole his work because they said they'd done it better than him. Yep. Uh, so oh, right. they niggled some of the bugs out. I respect them for that. <laughs> that thing. And yeah. Ben was like, what do you mean? Well, how can you respect someone that's like doing this to kids? He didn't really respect kids at all. And she was like very upfront and quite partial towards the guy. And Yeah. And I, I'm curious to what that was about. Like, because she's never really shown that much interest in other life. Yeah. She's very, uh... so seems like an odd time to take that stance. Like, granted, it's a pretty huge thing, so sure, but yeah, it seems weird to then go into like a whole lecturing type yeah. thing. She but... certainly is um, a lot more emotional in the wired than she is outside. Yeah. She's just like, oh, okay, outside type thing. Shy and not very, doesn't stand up to herself type thing. Where, but in the wire, she will literally stand up for herself and berate other people for being idiots and incompetent and stuff like that. Yeah, you're right. It is her confidence. Her confidence is very, very different. But also, I feel like her, uh, her confidence kind of overwrites her moral compass. Yeah. Uh, more often than not, like she, she, I think oversteps what you would say are reasonable, uh, social norms, and and interacts harshly or superioristic, superiorly, su superior. I don't know, superiorly. I don't know how you say that. Superior, In a superior manner. Yeah, superior manner. <laughs> oh, uh, um, Omega Supreme. Yeah, Omega Supreme. So yeah. the guy. Of course, like is very, as we say, sort of remorseful and kind of his. It's it's now his time to go, which presumably just kind of means that that connection is fading because he's he's uh he's dying, in the real world. Yeah, yeah, he's he is, uh, and she kind of like, oh, that's my time to go, that thing, and then kind of fades away. Either he he fell asleep or he actually passed. You don't know. Yeah. And then she comes out of the... I suspect the latter. Oh, the... Fell asleep. No, he's dead. Oh, he died. Well, maybe, because so. the end, the end seems kind of like that. But at the same time, it's like... What's that got to do with these kids holding their hand up and showing, like, Lane as, like, the omnipotent being? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense in that way. No, I couldn't connect what was going on. Um, yeah, and of course, after all this happens, you know, she gets back home and the the men in black are still outside. <laughs> oh, no, they, they reappear. Uh, yeah, they've got their little lasers outside. Yeah. They're like oh. they're darting about a room. Yeah, but she's berating the knights and going, you knights, you, you're cowards. You're, you're not going to speak to me anymore, type thing. Blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then and then she looks up because she's not connected in the wire and yep. as much as she was before. Um, she looks up and sees the lights on the ceiling and is like, oh, that's them, and runs out and berates them because she thinks they're these the knights. Yeah, these motherfuckers. You're the knights, aren't you? And they're like, yep. calm down, miss. And also, you want to kind of get down. And then a big yeah. explosion happens in her room. Yeah, her room. Her room blows up. Yeah. Uh, Breaking the window. Which is interesting. That does yeah, shatter. I, uh, yeah, I think it's interesting because they say it's uh, uh, that the knights, who they are apparently, it seems like are they aren't the knights. Um, yeah planted some sort of 
quote, parasite bomb, end quote. <laughs> In, into I, our cooling system. Yeah. Into the coolant system, yeah. And that's why it's well, because you were during the conversation with it and when she was breaking it, you saw like the pressure gauge flying up. Yeah, that's right. Oh, uh, uh, that's the thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I totally forgot to mention on the uh, coolant gauge, it's a .co.uk domain. It is uh, Mobius. Yeah, that's that is that computer parts. There might be. I don't, know. I don't really tell. Uh, I'll do it now. All I know is Mobius is Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh yeah. Not immediately going somewhere, which is uh, interesting. Oh yeah. Oh. Virtualization oh, con consultation support. Telephony services. Client. Yeah, that's interesting. It's a oh. WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's WordPress, but they have not. Uh, they have not replaced their uh, their favicon, and the the site doesn't have an SSL certificate. So, yeah, so now we're just infected by uh, viruses yeah. and uh, bugs. So you know, yep, the way a parasite bomb in our computers or something, maybe yeah, in a coolant system. Um, but luckily, I I not water cooled my machine, so it's okay. <laughs> Just the final, <laughs> final world to high degrees and like pop. <laughs> um, or we'll get like um, some weird coming up going, ah, Lane, Lane, a wee picture of Lane will appear at the bottom of right hand car on the screen going, ah, 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 Lane is Dennis Nedry. Yeah. <laughs> Lays down his nettery. Totally is. Oh, uh, okay. Um, That's the end of that episode. That is the end of that episode. And once again, it answers no questions, but creates many. Nope. Oh, so many questions. Which may or not be answered in the rest of the series. Um, yeah. I'm going with... Having watched a little bit ahead of here already, I'm going to say that I don't feel confident that these questions <laughs> have been answered. So, not yet. <laughs> uh, so, what's your rating? What do you give this? I think I'm sticking with a six on it. Just because, sure, it, it's kind of an interesting episode where she does stuff, but it's not explained in any form of why she's done this. Yeah. Why, why she's researched this kids. Because all you got is kids holding hands up and it's like, oh, kids are holding hands up. That must be what I need to research. And it's like, what? That's why I appeared in the sky above Tokyo. I uh, I will agree with you. I think I'll stick with the six as well. But it's similar to the previous episode. I think there's some really cool bits in it. Uh, and then the rest of it kind of muddles along. So yeah. It's some weird ass like was it Neo? Kind of like cyberpunk themes. Would it be cyberpunk? Is that cyberpunk? Yeah. Let's say yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. uh, yeah. So that's the end of that episode. Um, and if it has a scarf, it's throw it over a left shoulder. That's the end of that chapter. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, that brings us to the end of this episode as well, oh. um, which leads oh. us on to the uh, the usual fun in games. Oh yeah, yeah, there you go. Like just yeah, the hoodie, the hoodie, the hoodie bit. Yep. Oh, that's the, work. The, the tassel. <laughs> yeah, the, your hoodie tassel. That'll work. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like hoodie tassel would be a good name for a rapper. Um, I don't know why. I might might already be. You're probably not wrong. <laughs> so, uh, yes, uh, we are, of course, a podcast, as you probably know if you're listening to this. Mm -hmm. um, we can be found where all good podcasts can be found. Google, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Spotify. We're on anchor.fm forward slash who's that anime. 
We have a Facebook group where you can go and visit to see when new episodes are released and to see some occasional memes. Um, that is facebook.com forward slash who's the anime. And now also we are starting to upload the video back catalogue of these episodes onto YouTube. So we will be uh, sharing those periodically on the Facebook too. But if you search for the face the YouTube channel, who's that anime on YouTube, you'll be able to find it and a subscription and a follow on Facebook would be cool. If you'd like to leave us a review on your podcast platform of choice, that would be awesome. We don't make any money on these. We just like to talk about anime and stuff. So always cool to get a review, good, bad, and different. Always good to hear feedback one way or another. And mm -hmm. if you really want to, to help us out, uh, tell a friend. Uh, it'd be cool to have more people to listen to this and talk to anime about it. Yeah. Um, Colin likes to play video games sometimes on twitch.tv forward slash couchfuel. Um, there is an archive of all of that stuff on the YouTube channel Couchfuel, which you can yep. find by searching for Couchfuel on YouTube. Sometimes I like to play horror video games, and we are coming up to that set, that time of year, the October season, so potentially there will be some horror stuff going on on my channel. That's twitch.tv forward slash Hill Payman. Um, you can also find an archive of the stuff I've done on YouTube under the YouTube channel name Hill Payman as well. Yeah. And I think that ties it all up. Um, yeah, it's pretty much there, man. I mean, that's that's the end of that chapter, as it were, again. And uh, I just wanted to see how long it would take to complete ex uh, Serial Experiments Lane. Oh, how long to beat? Did you uh, how long to beat it? Uh, maybe if I can spell. I can't spell. <laughs> oh. nah, that is an issue. Uh, Lane. Lane. No, no, that did not work either. Uh, 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 30 hours, apparently. 30 hours? Yep. Could do that in a day. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. My Interestingly, uh, the entry on uh, on how long to beat was updated three days ago. Yeah. Yeah, that's wow. weird. Someone paid seven hundred pounds for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. Good, good lord. Uh, we will not be doing that. Uh, no. We will play it somehow, at some point, in some, some way. Um, as we've kind of been threatening, uh, Colin and I haven't played a game in the same room for a long time now. Over a year, man. A year and a half. Yep. I, I, closer to two years, I think. No, no. You, you, your, I sure last game we played together was like Hello James and stuff like that. I'm sure that was this year. When was that? I'm sure that was last year. That was February. Was it that? Yeah, because it's around about February. You're uh, sure you're around and and stuff is happening, and then yeah, I remember for the longest time I had a bus ticket in my wallet from meeting up in March on a Saturday night. Uh, just like maybe 10 days before lockdown yeah we we're talking about how crazy it was i was at rad apple uh that's the place bar in uh, dundee yeah. there yeah, that's not localized in as to a place in scotland not at all not at all uh i uh i, I quite there. like that place that was very cool it's nice and big but i don't know if it survived because it kind uh, of was no kind of open like maybe it a few was kind months of empty when we were there yeah that's well it's i think it was conrad's before that was it conrad's I think it was Murphy's before that yeah yeah it's one of those pubs that just change names all the time people keep going oh that's a prime location let's do that and then no one ever goes <laughs> up that way 
<laughs> no, it's yeah. a shame. It was a, a good quiet pub, which is why I liked it. But quiet yeah. pubs never survive, especially when they've probably got the high highest rate of a city centre. Yeah, that's why you need the Phoenix. Need the Phoenix. Yeah, the Phoenix is, uh, you know, it's not the bar we want, but it's the bar we need. Yeah, I mean the globe's changed. It's, it's yeah, some, it's not the globe anymore. It's got some weird ass Irish name because it came in an Irish bar. Ah, uh, I don't know. I drank around the corner and. One called Tinsmith, which was something else when Blue Art Uni. It's still there. Yeah, it's certainly it's still a sign up for it. <laughs> I've never walked by when it's open, but then no, you don't really go out. And these, no. these days, because everyone's like, oh shit, going out to a pub, that just means everyone's going to hug and like, hey, mate, you're great, and then not wear masks because they're all inebriated. Um. Anyway, uh, I'm still recording here. <laughs> you say they're all enumerated. Enumerated. Yes, they are able to count, <laughs> or they are able to count. <laughs> <laughs> they have been counted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, hopefully. <laughs> uh. I think that's. Uh... I feel like that might be my go-to phrase for saying when I've had too many is that I'm I'm a bit enumerated. Enumerated. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Enumerate is good, man. Um anyway, so we'll probably uh We should this. end this. Yeah. Uh th- thank you very much for listening. And uh, uh listen to the last five minutes of Ramble. <laughs> yeah. And and you know, the middle bit where we rambled for maybe 10 minutes as well. There's a lot of rambling in this one, so apologies for going a little off topic, but we still didn't. We'll see you again in the next episode when we're back to discuss episode 7 and 8 of Serial Experiments Lane. Hopefully things become clearer, although making no promises. Definitely not making promises. I'm still confused. <laughs> right, anyway. See you later, guys. Bye, folks. Bye. Oh. Uh... nothing. It's nothing at all.